What's going on guys, it's Brandon here from dailyiFix.com and so I'll be showing you guys my top 10 features in the new iOS 8 Beta 1. Now these are in no particular order, they are just my favorite um, new features in iOS Beta 1. So let's get started right off with the Messages app. So let's go ahead and open Messages. And when we go to a message, this is just me messaging myself, you'll see that there are two new buttons here. There's the camera button right here on the left and also this little microphone button here on the right. And those are actually to send voice and video messages. So if I wanted to send somebody a voice message, all I have to do is hold this. And as you can see, it's recording right now. And right when I stop, you can play it back by clicking that. Hold this. And as you can see, it's recording right now. And right okay, so you just heard my voice. And if you hit the X, it will completely delete this voice message and will not send it. But if you hit this up arrow, it will send it right away. And as you can tell, this will actually play in line, which means it will play in the actual Messages app. So if I go ahead and click that, hold this, and as you can see, it, as you can see, it played in there. But now on my iPhone 5S, which is on iOS 7.0.1, as you can see, I will have to open it up in an external screen and play it using QuickTime. So it is in line, and it's the same with videos. If you want to record a video message, as you can see, that's me right there. If you go ahead and tap this video right here, as you can see, it'll start recording right up here. And if you wanted to stop it and play it back, you can click the little play button right there or, and you can send it by hitting the up arrow or you can delete it by hitting the X. And again, the videos will also play in line and you will not have to open an external screen. Another cool thing about the Messages app up here, the details button, down here it will show all the attachments sent within the, uh, sent within the conversation. You can do not disturb a single person uh, in text messaging. You can also share your location and uh, send my current location. So you can send uh, locations back and forth to whoever you're texting and that will just be, the location will only be available to that person you're texting. Some other notable features in the iOS 8 Messages app include predictive text, aka quick type, which is actually like Android. It has a box down here below the message where you type normally. So it'd be right below these Fs, there would be a little box that shows you know what you might type next. You can go ahead, so if I wanted to type there, if I type T and it sh it'll show up down here, so if I click that little box, hit there, it'll automatically pop up in here. Um, similar to a Android and multiple other devices that you've seen before. Another important feature in the Messages app is the ability to leave group chats or mute people. You can actually turn notifications off for certain people. You can kick people out of group chats. You can rename the group chat. All kinds of cool things you could do with the group chat in iOS 8. The next feature is Quick Reply, which allows you to reply to text messages via the home screen or the lock screen. So I'm going to go ahead and send myself a text from my iPhone 5S. And as you can see right here, we'll just swipe down and you'll be able to send it without opening the Messages app. Makes everything a lot easier. But one thing that I did notice that could be a vulnerability and people will not like is that, as you can see, I have a passcode to get into my uh, device. But if I send a text message, it'll pop up right here. I could slide and I can actually reply without even putting in the password. As you can see, it went through and everything. So that is something, hopefully, if Apple gets hold of this, which they probably won't, or if somebody can send something to Apple, that is definitely something that needs to be fixed. You should have to put in your password to send a reply. The next feature is something that wasn't announced at WWDC and something that has been overlooked by a lot of people. So if we go to our settings and we go to usage and we go to battery usage, iOS 8 actually shows you now which apps are taking up most of your battery. So as you can see in the last 24 hours, my home and lock screen has taken up 30% of my battery. My camera and location has taken up 24%, messages 17%, etc, etc. Last seven days, uh, the messages have actually taken up the most in the last seven days. So as you can see, it breaks it down uh, individually by which apps are using the most battery, which is really cool. And that actually takes out, uh, you know, that will eliminate some apps out there that have tried to accomplish the same thing. This is now native in your uh, native um, settings app. So it is very easy to get to and very, very informative. The next feature is Spotlight, which is new and improved and a lot more advanced. So if we go ahead and swipe down, go to our Spotlight, it will now show things that are not actually on our device. So say we want to install an application, just say Flappy Bird. Actually, Flappy Bird's not even on there. I actually have it on here. Never mind. Uh, let's say we wanted to download uh, Madden. As you can see, Madden NFL 25 by EA Sports in the App Store. It will show up right there. And it will also show a Wikipedia page uh, for Madden 25 and if we go down you can also search the web and search Wikipedia so as, as you can see we'll go to the App Store it'll open up really quick it won't actually open the App Store app 
it'll just open an inline in the uh, in the spotlight launcher. So it's loading up right now. Of course, it's going to take you to the app store, and you're going to be able to download it straight from there. It could actually go directly to the store up there if you wanted to. Go ahead and hit cancel. It'll take you right back to here. So it's really cool. You could search for movies and all kind of things. Um, let's say, what's that new? Oh, it's 22 Jump Street. That's coming out soon. Let's go ahead and look at 22 Jump. As you can see, it'll, it'll pop up a Wikipedia before I even finish typing it. So go to that Wikipedia. It'll open it up in line right in the Spotlight application or in the Spotlight right there, see full water cool, see 22 Jump Street on iTunes, etc, etc. A lot more advanced, uh, a lot more useful, um, and it's very, very cool, very easy to navigate to things quickly, very easy to look up things on Google, Wikipedia, things like that. The next feature is actually an app called Health Kit, and this is something that has been widely talked about and pretty much highly anticipated. I mean, a lot of people, even if you're not into health, are pretty interested in this because it can be revolutionary. Basically, it allows you to gather all of your fitness and medical data from third-party applications like Nike Plus or any kind of nutrition app. And basically, it just ties it in. You'll have a dashboard that'll show everything at your fingertips. You can actually go in depth right here and look at all your lab results, medication, blood glucose, etc. Medical ID will actually show your medications you're on and all kind of things like that. Um, sources, this is where it'll show all of your apps that you have tied in to the HealthKit app. Again, there's not much you can do on this application because you know not many apps are tied in with iOS 8 and or HealthKit yet. So it's going to be cool, but we'll have to wait for the final build of iOS 8 to see that in action. The next feature is Siri. Siri got a big makeover. Uh, most of it's underneath the iPhone. You don't actually see it. It's actually a lot smarter now, and it'll actually uh, have voice activation. So if you say, hey Siri, it will actually launch Siri. Of course, that doesn't work right now because it is not the final build of iOS 8. I'm not sure why they didn't put it in the uh, first beta of iOS 8, but it does not work when you say, hey Siri. Uh, but one cool thing that it does do is it will actually listen to a song and pull it up on Shazam. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to Hold, go ahead and hold the home button and I'm going to play a song here in a second let's see what song do I want to play I don't understand, and I'm going to okay I know song. you don't understand hold on one second I search the web for it. I'm playing this on my speaker so here we go we're gonna hit this and as you can see it pulled up exactly what it is, down on my luck, Vic Mensa, and it showed the instrumental just because it didn't get to the, uh, the vocals yet. But it did show that, and if it is a song on iTunes, it will actually show a buy button right here. I don't want to play anything that's, you know, copyright material. Um, so, but if you did that, you'll be able to actually buy it straight from within Siri. The next new feature in iOS 8 is actually in the Safari app. So if you go to a website and you want to see the desktop version, if you go up here, scroll down, and you can actually request the desktop site or add to favorites just like that. Something small, but something that can definitely be useful if you actually can't you know, access certain things on a mobile website and you need to see the desktop site, you can do that very easily. Another cool thing is in settings, if you go to Safari, there's actually a new search engine called DuckDuckGo. So I'm not really too sure, I'm not familiar with DuckDuckGo because I just am a big Google fan, I just use Google all the time. But that is something new and something that you may want to research and look into. There's also new things down here for um, quick website search. You can actually do a quick website search. It says use the smart search field to search within websites by typing the website name as a part of your search. For example, type Wiki Einstein to show Wiki Wikipedia results for Einstein. So again, something small, you can also preload the top hit, that's also a new feature. So small things, but very useful things if you are an avid Safari user. The next feature is within the notification center. So if we go ahead and swipe down our notification center, we'll go ahead and send myself a text message. And as you can see, if you swipe left, you can either mark it as red or reply. Both of these will actually remove it from your notification center. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that as red. And as you can see, it just cleans up the notification center, makes it look cleaner and less to worry about in there. Something small, but something new and something that will make your life easier. Another thing with the Notification Center is that there will be third-party widgets when the final build of iOS 8 finally comes out. There will be widgets like ESPN, eBay, you know, websites like that where you can actually, you know, interact with the website via Notification Center and not have to go to the actual website. So we'll have to wait for more information on that, but it is definitely a cool feature to look forward to. The next feature is within the camera app. So we go ahead to the camera app. As you can see right here, you can see my lovely chair and my picture. Uh, 
So if in the camera app you actually ha now have a new feature besides photo, video, square, there's actually something called time lapse, which will make a time lapse as the name says. If you go ahead and tap that, it'll actually record a video. And as you can see, I just got to make some movement so you can see. And it will actually speed it up uh, significantly so it will look like a time lapse. So this would be cool, you know, to record something like in the city, New York City, Vegas, something like that. All the people walking around, it will look really cool. So as you can see, this is going to play... Oops. Was that it? Yeah, that was it. Okay. Go ahead and play. As you can see, it went by within, you know, two or three seconds. So it's really cool if you, like I said, in the city or something like that, something where it's going to be a lot of movement and a lot of activity it would be really cool. Uh, but, you know, right now I really don't have a use for that. But if I were to travel, I would definitely use that. So it is a cool addition. Also, you can now adjust the exposure manually. So if you go ahead and tap somewhere, you see that little sun icon right there. Let me zoom in real quick so you can see that up close. That little sun icon right there, if you go ahead and tap that, and pull up and down as you can see it's getting lighter and darker this is actually the exposure that you can make manually yourself which gives you a lot more control over the pictures you take and can actually make your picture look a lot better the last thing in the camera app is the timer which you can actually now set right here to off three seconds or ten seconds so if I go ahead and tap three seconds it will take a photo and three seconds after I hit that as you can see three two one there we go, I took the picture. So that's really cool if you were taking like a family picture or something like that, didn't have anybody to hold the camera, that could be very useful. Now the tenth and final feature in iOS 8 that I really like is in the weather app. As you can see, this is my current, it's 91 degrees outside right now, but that's nothing new. If we go ahead and swipe over, you can now see 24 hours in advance right here. Instead of 12 hours, you can now see 24. Also, you can now see nine days in advance on the uh, weekly forecast. So if I go ahead and scroll down, as you can see, it actually gives me a description as well. So it's a lot more, uh, you know, it's a lot more descriptive with what's going on. It's a lot more, what's the word I'm looking for? In depth. It's a lot more in depth weather. And being myself, since it rains here a lot, I tend to check the weather a lot because I don't like driving my beautiful car in the rain. I do check the weather a lot. So as you can see, it says today mostly cloudy currently. The high will be 93, partly cloudy tonight, with a low of 73. So you can sound like your own reporter there talking like that to your friends and family. So as you can see, it shows sunrise. The uh, time, 6.23 a.m., there's a 10% chance of wain, rain, one mile an hour uh, wind, precipitation zero, visibility nine, sunset. As you can see, it's just really, really in-depth and really cool. So those are my favorite features in iOS 8, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Let me know if there's a feature that you didn't know about that I covered today, or let me know if there's a feature that you think should have been in my top 10 but wasn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later. Peace.